Mark, Mark Butcher, uh, Managing Director of Envelo Tours. Um, thanks for this amazing experience. I want to ask you, um, you're a fifth generation Zimbabwean, correct? Correct. I'm, I'm actually a fifth generation African. Okay. I've probably only been three generations in uh, Zimbabwe. And how did you manage to stay in the country when most of your family left? Um, back in the 1990s when we started community-based tourism, you know, I was never involved with farms or farming or anything like that. We were, we put, we started setting up lodges in the, in the 1990s on, uh, on communal lands and in community lands. And during, um, uh, the land grabs and the land invasions in Zimbabwe in the early 2000s it never affected us. We were out here, you can see we were in Wangi National Park out here and the communities, community lands around it. Uh, we weren't affected at all by, by any of those issues. Uh, it, what work did you do in the early days in parks and, and, and forest management? Yeah, I joined uh, Department of National Parks and Wildlife Management in 1979. I did five or six years with them then um, when I, I went off to get a university degree in zoology and botany when I came back from that and I joined the Forest Commission um, in Zimbabwe as, their, as a wildlife officer and I rose up to be the provincial, I was advanced up to be the provincial wildlife officer in charge of wildlife in all the forest areas, mostly around the periphery of Wanka National Park. And you were involved in the, the rhino wars? Yeah, Part back 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 in the 1980s, you know, Zimbabwe fought its, fought its rhino wars then. Uh, South Africa's going through them now, but um, uh, we had we had huge, huge uh, issues with international poaching back then. And I just going out with you has been amazing on, on walking safaris. I, I feel like you're sort of a, a Jedi of the of the bush, you know what I mean? How did you how did you develop the you know, it's like you have the force of nature with you and, and just the confidence going out with you. It's, it's you know, how how did that come about? You know, it's um, hard to say Kurt, you know, a lot of this is I've I live here, this is my this is my backyard. I've been here for thirty years. Uh, when I was a small kid this is what I did, walked around the woods here and spoke to a lot of the old Indebele people here. They talk, taught me a lot of things. Later on I started speaking to scientists, they taught me more things. Uh, I swear I feel at home. It's my home. Mm, that's great. Um, why did you build Camelthorn outside the park? Um, Camelthorn always always I wanted to build a lodge on the periphery of Wangan National Park on community land. Um, the tourism model it too often, I believe, is inside the park and it's benefiting shareholders who are, live outside of the park. I really wanted to build a lodge on community land so that benefits go to the community, community directly involved. It's their lodge, uh, peripheral to the park. Uh, and the other big thing, of course, is that when guests come and come and visit us, we can involve animals and we can involve people because uh, I'm totally convinced that uh, it's not just about the animals, you know, with African safaris. We need to involve people both for the fun of it, for international guests, and for long-term conservation, protection of our protected areas. Yeah, excellent. So what is your, your long-term vision? You know, what are you trying to accomplish with, with, with the Envelo safaris? Um, Kurt, the answer to that is that we are trying to build up a network of lodges in northwestern Zimbabwe, in the Victoria Falls, Zambezi River, Wangi National Park area, uh, trying to um, offer different, different lodges for all kinds of different tastes, very, very strong community base. Several of our lodges are on community land. We've developed a, uh, a tourism model around Camelthorn, which I believe is very, very successful. Uh, already there, poaching has just about stopped completely. Lots of jobs for, uh, the, com uh, for the young people coming out of that community. They've educated from the schools that are being built through our programs. And I believe that model, I want to extend that model all the way around Wangi National Park, particularly on that southern boundary, where, which is heavily settled with people uh, and has the biggest human, human wildlife conflict. And probably in time, when we, when we spoke about a rhino war earlier, one day we're going to have to fight our, our, our elephant war here. You know, the, um, the issues that East Africa has with ivory poaching now are coming to us. And we need to have our communities involved with protection of our, of our park. Otherwise, we're going to, we're going to have um, huge problems with protecting our elephant in the future. Excellent. Thanks.